the bell icon to turn on notifications. It's now time for us to move on and concentrate on the exciting part of Excel, and that is formulas and functions. Formulas are really what Excel is most known for. And all formulas are, if you're not familiar with them, are basically calculations. And the most simple example of the type of formula that you can do in Excel is a sum calculation. And what I mean by that is just simply adding up a list of numbers in a worksheet. Now, before we get too far ahead of ourselves, let's fully explore what formulas and functions are, and I'll show you the basics of how they work. It's really important that you understand how formulas are constructed and the general layout and how they calculate before you can move on to more complex formulas. Now you'll notice there that I've used the words formulas and functions kind of interchangeably. And in many respects, that is absolutely fine. A formula is a calculation that uses Excel functions. And if you're wondering what a function is, well, if you take a look on your formulas tab, notice here we have a function library. And there are over 500 functions in Excel that will help you construct very simple to very complex formulas. Each function is assigned to a specific group. So really, whatever it is that you're trying to do determines which function you're going to use in your formula. Now, we'll say that throughout your Excel career, you're probably never, ever going to use all 500 formulas. A lot of them are very specialized and tailored towards specific industries like engineering or accounting. But there are definitely 15 to 20 formulas that you'll find yourself using all the time. And it's really important that you have knowledge of the basic formulas or what I call the big five formulas in Excel. And that is what we're going to start out with in this section. So let's take a look at how formulas are constructed. Now I'm working in the formulas and functions explained workbook, and you'll find that in the course files folder. We have three tabs at the bottom and I'm currently clicked on the intro tab. So let's start out with a basic sum calculation where we're adding numbers together. If I have a couple of numbers in a worksheet, so let's just say I have 10 and 20 in here, and I now want to add both of these together, I could construct a very basic formula. Now, when you're typing in any formula into Excel, you must always start with an equals in the cell. That tells Excel that you want to type an actual formula as opposed to typing text into the cell. So if I want to add 10 and 20 together, I could type 10 plus 20. And when I hit enter, it's going to give me that correct answer of 30. Now, the way that I've done this, and if I click on this cell, you can see it in the formula bar. This isn't the most efficient way of working with numbers in Excel. Because what this means is that if either of these numbers above were to change, so let's change the 10 to a 5, the formula isn't going to update because I've hard coded the numbers into the formula. A much better way of working with numbers when you're doing calculations is to use the cell references instead. So what I could type instead is equals F3 plus F4 and hit enter. So that gives me the answer of 25, but because I'm using the cell references, now when any of the numbers change in either of those cells, the formula is going to automatically update. So this cuts down on the amount of editing I'm having to do if numbers are constantly changing. So my first tip is always use cell references in your Excel formulas. So that is one way I could add up some numbers. But what if I have a much longer list of numbers like I have in this little table? I have some figures in here. Let's just say they're sales figures for the months January to December for the year 2020. And I want to add them all up so that I get a total in cell C15. Well, what I could do here, I guess, is I could type in equals and I could use the same method. I could select cell C3 plus I could go to C4 plus C5 plus so on 
and so forth. But that's going to take me quite a bit of time. Imagine if I had 10,000 rows of data and I wanted to add up all of the numbers in 10,000 rows. Do I really want to go through and start individually selecting cells and separating them with a plus symbol? No, I don't. So this is where we could use an Excel function instead of just the cell references. So let's escape out of here because we're going to use the sum function instead. And sum is normally the first formula that everybody learns in Excel. Now notice as I typed in the word sum, I have a list of functions appear underneath. And this is something called IntelliSense. As I start to type in a formula, Excel searches through its massive function library to try and match what it is that I'm typing. So currently it's brought up all of the functions that have something to do with sum. Now the one that I want is the one at the top of this list. So I could press the tab key simply to select it. Now notice what it's also done there. It's put in an open bracket or a parentheses if you're in the US. And brackets contain what we call our function arguments. That is the information that we need to provide to the function so it knows what to calculate. And you'll notice underneath we get a little bit of helper text. So it's telling me that I need to provide some numbers basically. What do I want to add up? So what I can do here is simply select the entire cell range that I want to add up. Now notice that I have two dots separating C3 and C14, which basically means cell range C3 to C14. Now if you've got an open bracket, you must always remember to close off as many brackets as you've opened. So now if I hit enter, it's very quickly used the sum function to add up everything in the cell range above. Now notice that I have a little green triangle in the left hand corner of this cell. And I'm going to talk to you more about what exactly that is and why it's appearing when we talk about error checking. So now that we've seen our first very basic formula, I just want to talk to you in a bit further detail about operators. So let's jump across to the operator worksheet. Now when you're doing calculations in Excel, you can do additions, subtractions, multiplications, divisions, and other things. These are by no means all of the operators that we can use in Excel. They're just really the main four and the four we're going to be focusing on in this section. So again, if I had a couple of numbers in some cells here and I wanted to subtract these, what I could do is I could say Excel so F5 minus F4, and that's going to give me my total. Similarly, I could do F5 multiplied, which is the asterisk symbol on your keyboard, by F4 to get a different total. And if I want to do a division, I can select the cell and we want to put a forward slash in there and then select our other cell to perform that calculation. So don't forget about these different operators and make sure you know where to find those on your keyboard. Now, so far, we've been taking a look at very simple formulas in their structure. And what I mean by that is that we've just been adding, subtracting, multiplying two numbers together. Now, what about if I have a more complex calculation? So what if I wanted to type in something like 10 plus 2 divided by 2? What do you think the result of that calculation is going to be? Because in my mind, this calculation is doing 10 plus 2, which is going to be 12, divided by 2, which is going to give me 6. Now if I press Enter, Excel comes back with 11. Now why is it giving me a result of 11 as opposed to 6? Well, this has something to do with what we call the order of operations. And this is going to take you all the way back to maths class when you were at school. So let's jump across to the bod mass worksheet. Now in maths we have the bod mass principle or the bod mass rule. And I know that the acronym for this rule is different in different countries. In some places it's referred to as PID mass, sometimes PED mass, but the rules are effectively exactly the same. So I've got two versions of it listed out here. 
And what this rule does is it tells us the order in maths that calculations are performed. So basically, anything that's in brackets within a calculation is going to be calculated first. It will then calculate the orders, so things like square roots. It will then do division, followed by multiplication, then addition, and then subtraction. So based on this rule, we can work out why we're getting the answer of 11 as opposed to 6. So if I go back to my BODMAS page, and let's just type this in again, 10 plus 2 divided by 2. So if we now look at the BODMAS rule, do I have anything in this formula in brackets? No, I don't. Do I have any orders? No, I don't. Do I have any divisions? Yes, I do. So Excel is going to do the division first. So in this case, 2 divided by 2 which gives us the answer of 1. It's then going to do any multiplications, additions, or subtractions, and we have an addition remaining. So then effectively what it's going to do is 10 plus 1, which is why we get the answer of 11. If I wanted this to calculate so that we have an answer of 6, the easiest thing to do here would be to put the 10 plus 2 within brackets because then Excel is going to calculate 10 plus 2 first, and then it's going to do the division, which will give us an answer of 6. So this is a really important rule to get your head around, because it runs through every single formula that you construct in Excel. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe, so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.